This is exactly right. Welcome to my favorite murder. This is a mini sode. It's mini. That's Karen. It's Ka- that's Georgia. And that's still Karen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that remains Georgia. <laughs> uh, we read your stories. Listen, look, the very end of this episode, oh, we have oh. a very fucking crazy special surprise for you. That's bananas that we've been waiting that for. We've been ever. I mean, waiting for so long to tell you and told you we've been waiting. And you know that you're you've been teased so long about this that you don't care anymore. Just get through this one last bullshit because you're going to care again. Exactly. Uh, in a year, it's going to make your heart grow two sizes too small. And here's a hint. That's exactly right. <laughs> and that's <laughs> exactly, exactly right. OK, you go first. Guys, here's my nu- first. I was going to say number one, but that's not true. <laughs> okay. how, how would we pick? I mean, truly. I'm not going to read the subject line. Okay. It's a giveaway. Guys, really, let's be a little more mysterious in our subject lines. <laughs> yeah, but then they won't know what, like, wh- what to pull, you know? It's a <sighs> maybe an alternative subject line. That's right. You can give the one that you want to give so people know what the story is about. Yeah. But then how about show line? Right. The show subject line of that's a teaser. Right. And then Stephen could be like, this is, okay, here we go. Look, this was a meeting that we're supposed to be having off mic. <laughs> But we're bringing you behind the scenes. Behind the scenes of Exactly Right. <laughs> it's so boring. Okay. Hi, everyone. And also Steven's mustache. I went. So I went to the dentist yesterday to get some cavities filled. And she casually asked me if I was doing anything fun this weekend. I said no. But the, but that next weekend, I was driving down from Reno, where I live, with some friends to see my favorite podcast live. I told her what MFM is, and she got really excited. Uh. Turns out my dentist wanted to be a forensic dentist <gasps> dentist sorry and had taken a bunch of forensic dentistry classes dude while she was numbing my face she told me about this case she'd learned about in class and actually examined the remains in the 80s this biker had disappeared but since it's nevada a state that was basically created to make it easy to hide a body <laughs> they weren't able to find him and it was kind of forgotten about until recently in the interim a family had bought a house in virginia city which is nearby and that's where my murder ha- was started oh in that's right vegas last night yeah that's right a quick sidebar last night we did a big show in vegas thank you so much Ugh. las vegas for being there and everybody who came but also, t- the time changed. We lost an hour. And George and I look like we're in a cold commercial right now. <laughs> we're both like, we're both ruddy and run down. And mm-hmm. we're both wearing weird bathrobes. How did we? I went to bed at four in the morning. Yeah. I played some Buffalo. Buffalo! Buffalo! How fun was it? I won money. Okay. Yeah. It, it was really fun. I won no money. <laughs> I just kept putting in $5 bills and it, immediately they'd just be gone. Because they, they know that like she's not going to stick around. She doesn't even know what she's doing. <laughs> okay. And now we're back. Okay. In the here email. we are. Begin. Um, uh, in the interim, a family had bought a house in Virginia City, which is nearby, and they'd been having issues with their septic tank. Oh, no. Yes. They decided to drain it to see if that would help. But the pump got clogged with a boot. Dude. Which is a huge deal. <laughs> if they find anything in a septic tank that could be part of a body, it basically becomes an investigation. Wow. I would hope so. Yeah, I gotta. They're searching through, and they find a necklace, <gasps> and then some clothing, and then a remarkably well-preserved body. Holy sh... Literally, holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> whole body never Leash you here. get the rest Appa- apparently the person who killed him had shot him and put his body in their septic tank but then they poured bleach into the tank septic tanks operate by having a specific biome which is made of microorganisms that break everything down when the killer poured bleach into the tank they killed off the mic- microorganisms mm. and it stopped decomp almost completely amazing the person then left the house goodbye and it had sat empty until a few years ago when the family moved in and discovered the body the body was mostly unrecognizable but they were still able to pull his dental records and confirmed it was him and my adorable dentist was there doing the work i tried not to think about the fact that her hands yes. had been in a super dead mouth and now we're in mine that had been in a septic tank for years too <laughs> right but that's what soaps are for okay <laughs> Okay, fine. Okay. Anyway, that's my Nevada hometown. So incredibly excited to see y'all in Vegas next week. Stay sexy and don't put bleach in your septic tank. No. Helen. 
Amazing. I know, isn't that good? That's so good. Oh, you just never know about people what their weird shit is. Yeah. Literally. Li- I mean, literally. Fuck. Okay, go on and on. And also, it- that it also just connects to my thing of things being hidden, where yeah. whether it's a box of beautiful treasure that you don't know is there from the 1700s, <laughs> uh-huh. or a, just a perfectly preserved biker. It, shit's everywhere. God damn it. Stuff is everywhere. It's everywhere. All over the world. It's hidden. I just want to know. I just want to be a metal detectorist. I just want to be x-ray specs <laughs> x-ray specs <laughs> what um okay okay here's one called swinger party gone wrong yes you ready for this i am okay put your papers down okay sorry i, just, I thought i lost my place okay <clears throat> hello karen georgia and steven so i never thought this was too big of a deal until i started listening to your podcast and realized how this could have ended so badly So I was 22 years old and I had just moved to Austin, Texas from LA. It was my first time living in a little one bedroom apartment all by myself. Around 10 PM one night, I ran out to my car to grab something and went straight back into my apartment, not locking the door behind me. I sat down on the couch with my cat and was about to start a movie. Not even a minute later, my door right next to the TV I was watching opened up completely. And in the doorway stood a man I had never seen. (gasps) A naked man. No. I was shocked. I couldn't even move. And we seriously stared at each other for a good 10 seconds before I jumped off the couch and said, who the fuck are you? Trying to sound tough and intimidating, even though I'm just this tiny girl with nothing but a cat as protection. The man then said, and he was being completely serious. Is this the swingers party? No. no. (laughs) What? Does this look like a swingers party? I said, no. Then he left and I could not stop laughing. (laughs) I called my dad right after and told him what happened as I'm still laughing. My dad, however, did not find it funny. No, I bet he didn't. He didn't believe that he was looking for a swingers party. He thought he was testing the waters with me and checking out my apartment. I went from laughing to terrified in 0.5 seconds. I called the police, gave the description of the man, told them the situation and stayed at my girlfriend's house the next two nights. The man ended up being my gay next door neighbor who had just moved in that week. So I ended up seeing him a lot and he acted like nothing had ever happened. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) So weird. I avoided him at all costs. So lock your damn doors always. Stay sexy and don't go to swingers parties or go walking around an apartment complex naked. Mandy. I mean, for real, I feel like any swinger would tell you, you don't arrive at the party totally nude. Like, let there be a a little bit of romance. First of all, you have to go to the buffet. You have to go put your hot dish down at but the buffet. Does it not remind you of something I would do t- to make you laugh? <laughs> yes. You show up at your hotel room. Is this a swingers party? Oh, oh, shit. Is this a swingers party? Oh, oh, this is a family of four. Georgia, have you met my college roommate? <laughs> or I get the room next door. <laughs> yeah, on next door. But yeah. what's crazy to me is that guy must have been on drugs because yes. he was going to his neighbors and yeah. going, is this a swingers party? Where it's like, so sorry, you you got invited to a swingers party at your neighbor's house and you didn't know where it was. And, and B, uh, <laughs> he, he owed her an edible arrangement the next day. And I'm sorry. Minimum. With fucking chocolate covered strawberries and everything. And and a nice card. Send an I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, arrangement. You send a card that says, dear neighbor. Yeah. My balls are none of your business, <laughs> and I made them your business. Wow, I'm that sorry. must have been scary for you. Yeah, B- goodbye. I, I'm please forgive me. I was on ketamine. <laughs> Love Barry. <laughs> oh Barry, always walking around <laughs> naked. Barry and his balls. Barry the bear and his balls. at the party again. <laughs> He shows up at the apartment building Christmas party. No, Barry, this is not Swingers. It's just a holiday party. Uh, or maybe they were just watching the movie Swingers, but he was wanted to, <laughs> he was wanted to do it naked. He's super into John Favreau. That makes way more sense. <laughs> okay. The subject line of this is, my friend had dead bodies in her front yard, not lighthearted. Oh, dear. Hello, Karen and Georgia and friends. I've been listening to your minisodes all day and had to share this quite fucked up story with y'all. I live in a small town in Connecticut. Oh, sorry. Then it's a story with you all. (laughs) There's no y'all in Connecticut. (laughs) I live in a small town in Connecticut that from the outside just looks like the biggest scandal um, would be that Deborah wore the wrong tennis skirt to the country club. (laughs) Fucking Deborah. Deborah. However, the shit goes down. There had been talk that my town's elementary school librarian and her husband had gone missing. And soon the local paper wrote an article about it, stating them as missing persons. We were all kind of weirded out, but thought, hey, if I was an elementary school librarian, I'd probably want to get the hell out of Dodge for a while also. <laughs> Amen. A couple of weeks went by and there was no sign of them until their pickup truck was found at a park, a park and ride off the highway. Mm-mm. 
um, with its window shattered. <gasps> Sketchy. A couple days later, my friend was driving home and was stopped by, uh, was stopped just at the top of her road by a shit ton of police officers. Side note. Everyone has that friend that bad and weird shit always happens mm-hmm. to. This is that friend. Oh, <laughs> so true. <laughs> Poor baby. <clears throat> she asked the officers what was up and they told her there was an investigation going on. When she got closer to her house, there were even more police cars and a fucking helicopter flying overhead. They had found human remains in her fucking front yard her Ugh. front yard was connected on the side to a property with an abandoned house so it wasn't directly in her front yard but her adjacent yard but you get the idea Shit. anyway human remains <laughs> that's, totally. how, that's how it's written um <laughs> turns out the remains were the librarian and her husband <gasps> long story short they had a recycling business in the next town where their son also worked he had been a drug addict and the librarian and her husband had just decided to cut him out of their will Oy vey. apparently this dude got pissed shot both his parents and decided to dump their bodies in my friend's front yard. Another side note. This yard is on the main road, so I don't know what he was thinking, but that... Uh, that was a poor choice if he was trying to get away with it. I mean, many poor choices. So many. From the beginning. Just a series of them. Yeah. Um, The first one was them having a child. (laughs) Don't ever do it. And then picking up that pipe. uh, He just smoked a really obnoxious tobacco pipe (laughs) that was just irritating to look at. To this day, my friends and I will will still bring up my fr- to my friend, hey, remember when there were dead bodies in your front yard? <laughs> Stay sexy and don't cut your psycho son out of your will or you will end up dead mm. in our front yard, Hannah. Oy vey. Yeah. That's rough. It's, yeah. Really? I mean, week after week, we justify my choice not to have children. I, f- I, for real. Truly. Like, that's what this podcast is. I, this podcast is basically two gals sending you the message. It's time to wrap <laughs> things down on this planet. Double up on your birth control. We're we're done here. Yeah, we're done. Uh, the earth is telling us we're done. We're <laughs> telling each other we're done. There's signs, red flags. The earth is like red fucking flag. And we're like, I don't know what that is. Is that pink? All of humanity is like, we can't figure out new ways to kill each other. <laughs> okay. I think it's time to wrap it down okay here is too dark i haven't too bad (laughs) then you're on the wrong podcast (laughs) helping my neighbor ssdgm hello karen georgia steven and associated pets partly due to my true crime obsession i like to know who my neighbors are which cars they drive and i always have an ear out in case anything is suspicious (laughs) okay yes i am also a bit nosy I kind of love that. Yeah. I was lying in bed, right? I was lying in bed watching television one night when I heard a woman screaming that didn't match the audio. Sure enough, when I paused the show, the screaming continued. Oh, no. I immediately looked out my bedroom window, which overlooks the parking lot of my apartment building. I recognized one of my neighbor's cars backing up while a shirtless man was holding onto the driver's door, throwing punches into the window and attempting to pull the door open. I instantly opened my window and screamed, I'm calling the cops, which I think is, I've yelled that at fights before. Sure. I've yelled, the cops are coming. Just, it's a good way to break shit up. Yeah, that's right. Um, and the guy took off. I got dressed as fast as humanly possible and flew downstairs, ran out and got her to get out of the car and back into the building in case he came back, where we immediately called 911. Turns out she had just gotten into the car and paused to turn her iPod on when out of nowhere, this guy opened her door and tried to take her seatbelt off and pull her out of the vehicle. Jesus. Straight up Grand Theft Auto style. Mm -mm. She started reversing the car in an attempt to knock him off her. And that's when I yelled down. The police response was quick and they brought in dogs and a ton of cars. They ended up finding the guy a few blocks north. I'm so glad I heard the scream and was able to help and look out for a fellow young woman. Yeah. She was okay physically, just extremely shaken up. SSDGM, always help out when you can, keep track of your neighbors, and please, please lock your door as soon as you get into your vehicle, Melissa. Yes. That's such a good point, Melissa. And it's really important. Just, there's no reason not to. If you're uh, yes. in your car, your home base, Clunk. click. Always. Done. I'd like to, I want to tell Melissa too, bring a weapon with you when you go downstairs to help someone. Oh, I'm good serious. idea. serious. Like, uh, like, I have pepper spray next to the door at all times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and in my nightstand and in my purse and in my car. You're absolutely going to get arrested for <laughs> misusing that pepper spray. I mean, I just spray out of the car window <laughs> when I'm driving. It's really, really f- like the freeing and relaxing. No wonder I'm always in a bad mood on the highway. Yeah, I put a Tom <laughs> Petty song on real loud and <laughs> free blue. <laughs> just spraying. Free spraying. <laughs> Try it. It's great. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Trauma nurse, this subject line, sorry, is trauma nurse attempted murder story. Oh, dear. 
Trauma nurse attempted. Trauma I'm so nurse. tired that I can't read. <laughs> it's truly <clears throat> the tiredest it's ever been in here. It's fun. <laughs> hey, all. I'm finally caught up with all the episodes, and I'm surprised there aren't more stories from first responders or nurses. We had a little run there, but yeah, we haven't gotten a lot. Hey, listen. <laughs> what? You finally caught up, and then you're here to, g- to give your complaints? <laughs> You're here to fucking say, here's, here's what is it? Here's what's lacking. Here's what's missing in your podcast. <sighs> um, I mean, thank you for all the feedback. We, <laughs> we've seen some shit. That's yes. very true. Yeah. And most of us have a dark sense of humor. Also true. So you better be fucking laughing at me attacking you. This story was a pivotal <laughs> moment in my nursing career. I work in a trauma ICU. I had heard on the news earlier that day in a s- nearby small town, a man shot his ex-wife, her boyfriend, and his own daughter, mm. and that he was on the run. Thankfully, all three lived. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, later that day, the police were um, on a high-speed chase with him and finally caught up. The shooter got out of the car, took his handgun, and shot himself in the head. Wow. He did it right in front of the local hospital. So they were able to keep him alive. And (gasps) and here's where I come in. Oh, my God. The man was stabilized at the local hospital and transferred to me in the ICU at a larger hospital. He had a a through-and-through gunshot wound to the head, so no chance of recovery. But there was a chance we could still harvest his organs. So I worked on this man to keep him alive all night. He was on the ventilator along with other medications to keep him alive. Those with a weak stomach... Cover your ears. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We'll give you a cover your ears pause. Steven, cover your ears. Oh, wait. His ears are already covered <laughs> with headphones. <laughs> he just burst into tears. Um, I can't cover them any more than I already have. <laughs> this is just one sentence, so you mute it for okay. five seconds. Or say la, la, la really yeah. loud. Okay, go. This dude had brain matter coming out of his <gasps> nose. Ew. And we're back. Okay. I was trying to keep alive a motherfucker that had just tried to kill three people, including his own young daughter. <sighs> it was really a bizarre experience for me. That's nursing, though. You take care of the best people and the worst. Mm. A lot of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I read that so weird. That was amazing. A lot of the worst. <laughs> this man was not an organ donor on his license, but his next of kin, his older daughter, made the decision to make him an organ Said donor. Said scrape that motherfucker clean. Yes. It was a small bit of justice that we were able to help people on the transplant plant list with his death please become an organ donor i agree yes please do um we're still in cmail that was not me (laughs) that was not me but i agree i won't go into too many details but it is very rare that someone who passes in the hospital is even a candidate for organ donation love you guys and everything you do z amazing it's such a good that's such a good point and then, you know, it, what took me so long, it, I was in my 20s when I became a donor and like just checked that little box. Yeah. Because I think everyone thinks of it as um, superstitious. You know, that thing of like, well, as soon as I do it, then I'm going to die. And something's going to happen to me. Or it's oh. like, well, that doesn't exist. This world isn't even fucking real. Like <laughs> everything is fine. Just but you're going to be a better person. Just put like click donor box. Yes. Nothing and is real. It, it, nothing's real. And also it just, um, there is a way you can be generous past. Right. Instead of standing around fearing your own death, you can look at it in a different way, maybe just briefly and be like, this could actually be, there are people who need spleens, eyeballs, and, uh, livers and kidneys and livers. Probably. I don't know. Everything. <laughs> and you know Organs. what else? It, it'll actually help your family after because they'll think of you pos- like the, not as an asshole as you were in your life. <laughs> Don't know where it I'm going. will make your family stop hating your those, guts. Those stories, your literal guts, because they'll be in someone else's fucking. They'll love, finally be able to love your guts. Those stories of people whose like kid dies and but they get the organs and then they go, we gotta go meet the oh, person who amazing. has their son's yeah. heart. Unbelievable. <laughs> and it's like that's real. Uh, yeah. That one video where the dad meets the the boy with his daughter's heart uh. is like. It really is her, still her heart. I know. It's the most beautiful thing of all time. She lived with it for, okay. Just give people your heart. Okay. I'm going to, let's end on that one and then tell everyone our fucking surprise. Great. Awesome. All right. Here it is. We get to finally announce this very exciting thing. It's our first original podcast for the Exactly Right Network. We've been working on it and we've been so excited to tell you, you guys are going to fucking love this. Are you ready for this? It is our new show. It's called Jensen and Holes, The Murder Squad. Guess what? 
Paul fucking Holes and Billy fucking Jensen, our friends, are doing a podcast, a podcast on our network. A true crime podcast. It's so exciting. It's uh, every week they go through a cold case um, and then you can use your skills, social and otherwise, uh, to do research and follow leads. You're basically a citizen detective. And yes. so you get to help. You get to listen. It's going to be incredible. These are two professionals who know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Going over cases. Some of them are uh, cases that are from Paul Holt's career yeah. that were cold and never got solved. Some are from Billy Jensen's career of being a, a true crime journalist. And there are interviews with people who are involved in the case. It's really incredible. We're so honored to bring this and so happy that they let us ho- help them. Yes. <laughs> no. Host them. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so you can go to themurdersquad.com. We're going to play the trailer for it right now. It comes out April 1st, the first episode. Yeah. Um, we're so excited for this, obviously. Yeah. So all, um, for all the information, like finding out when to subscribe and all the links and everything, just go to the murder squad.com right. and stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Here's the trailer. Goodbye. Listen to this. I'm Paul Holes. And I'm Billy Jensen. Welcome to the Murder Squad. All of a sudden, I realized I was in serious trouble. Literally felt a cold wind blow through the car, and then he grabbed my arm. This is the last time anybody saw Denise and her daughter. And that's when he, you know, stopped dead in his track and got in my personal space. And he said that that's none of my damn business. What else has he done? You've been listening, watching and reading true crime investigations for years. Now we want you to be part of our investigation. Starting April 1st, we want you to join our team. I've solved cases through crowdsourcing on social media. While in law enforcement, I've tracked down criminals for nearly three decades. We'll be diving into cases. Some are still looking for the killer. Others need to find victims. So you have to wonder, you know, how many may have survived their encounter. And others just need their name given back to them. Once you find out who she is, you can interview friends, you can interview family, show pictures, say, Did she, was she hanging out with this guy? And if you're able to provide them with information on that loved one, they never, never forget. Listen as we go through the case files and give our insights. All of the knowledge from all the true crime stories you've heard up to this point will now be put to good use. You know, the online sleuths can really prove themselves. They can provide a lot of assistance to law enforcement. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, whether that's Stitcher, Apple, or whatever, and you'll get episode one the moment it comes out. On April 1st, you become part of Jensen and Holes, the murder squad. Murder Squad.